I was like working too hard on it. So like uh, basically I burned myself out. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, one of the slackers got like a fucking full time job. Oh. Like <laughs> when <laughs> when they <laughs> What a, what a like slap in the face. <laughs> like I imagine. <laughs> Welcome to The Voice Podcast, the podcast for students by students, uh, produced by the Student Association of St. Lawrence College. And uh, like every show, you have me, Sean, your host, and we have back uh, episode one guest, uh, co-host Ben and Gabby. Hey. Hi. How are we doing, guys, tonight? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I'm enjoying the new setup. Mm -hmm. Looks great. <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. Yeah. Like, uh, wh why is Ben enjoying that new setup, do you think? Well, he gets to go on his little... Uh, Dinner. His little yeah, bro night. After. Yeah, bro night. So it's very improvised, uh, very improvised setting. If you don't know the location, right now we are at the student association, at the front desk, so we can basically see you coming up and down uh, the stairs and, and seeing how wonderful and unique you look like. Uh, just observing how people get down the stairs. <laughs> Anyways, and also... <laughs> well, I mean, it's an attraction. Look at him in his element. I know, he's vibing. He's vibing he's right there. now. He's no, he like definitely gets majestic. all the horse girls. <laughs> Well, anyways, it, it's just a, a like very relaxing episode tonight. I think yeah. we're not expecting to deliver <laughs> a masterclass. <laughs> and not with uh, us, at least. <laughs> no. <laughs> like always, you know, we are the podcast that never gives up. <laughs> we just keep giving. We're not gross. We just keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. We record. We just keep rolling. So. And I think we should just start saying how what we planned for this episode is talking about <laughs> what we feel about each other, actually, as college students. You know? oh, this is going to get heated real quick. Yeah, like, uh, what are the green flags about the friends? Because we are midway through the school calendar. Year. And let's talk about some green flags, red flags, uh, jailer situation, uh, ego trip that we went through during this semester and also positive things about people, uh, friends, also just vibing. So <laughs> let's just vibe with it. And let's start about uh, what are some green flags? Let's start with positivity, <laughs> first of all, because we will get very judgy. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> about some green flags about your friends this semester. What have been some green flags, Ben? Um, every Friday, me and my friends go to Costco <laughs> and uh, the two classes when we buy hot dogs. Ab absurd amounts of hot dogs. Yeah. So that's a green flag that they're down for that. Yeah. Um, other than that, like, we, I like, I don't know what's like in the other programs, but Can you in the clarify tech who your friends are, though? Brendan O'Donnell. Absolutely. Lie. Really? So, like, you know, so no, fl fr friend. so not friends, plural. <laughs> friends. Anyways, moving on from Gabby. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, other than that, I feel like in the tech wing, like classes are super interactive. Like mm -hmm. the wing itself is pretty run down. Yeah. But like when the teacher talks, it's like everyone's like all buddy buddy and laughing and we're working together. If someone's having trouble, we uh we work with them, try to catch them up. It's uh it feels like a pretty tight knit group in uh the blue wing. What about you guys? Shout out if you're still in the tech wing. <laughs> or blue wing, whatever we call it. Same yeah. thing. It's in a basement, right? Uh yeah, it's ground floor, like forgotten about when yeah. it's like yeah know, there's, there's a hair salon there's yeah, or massage stuff over there yeah and, and if you yeah. don't have a parking pass park yeah. there because they don't ever go no, there they don't want to walk that far so so the uh, the audience uh now knows that a big green flag of van is take him out for food just take yeah. him out for dinner like it, it hasn't changed like on the first dating episode he has also yeah. been like take me out for food like he's food driven <laughs> Whenever I need something from Ben, I just I'm I just promise food him food and he's there within minutes. Yeah, it's true. I'm yeah. very food motivated. Yeah. But he came to work out last Friday. Actually, I'm very proud of him. Did he? Die. Yeah. My cardio is not the best. Well, we could have all told you that. 
I don't know. He told himself that. By... Yeah, I, I, I came to the realization. Sean helped me come to a realization of my own physical limitations. It well, <laughs> it's, it's, I would say it's not a limitation. I would say it's a sure, mountain sure. to overcome. He pushes you. Yeah. I That's push a green you. Flag. He pushed me to my deathbed almost. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of worried. Like I'm it was, like, oh, I'm not like, gonna make it. it, it, it <laughs> my, ben was like in a very high compress shirt, you know, like he was coming to work out, and then after <laughs> a few minutes, he was like, ah, "I'm not feeling it right." <sighs> Dude, I was not ready. I thought we we're just going to do some like powerlifting, get some like like chest workout going. It ended up being cardio. Yeah, like <laughs> the point of working like out hit, is to... like a hit workout. Yeah, uh, it's functional training, not hit. Either way, I I was completely unmentally prepared for yeah. this, and my cardio is not the best already, mm. and I really should have paced myself a lot better than what yeah. I did. I should have done my research like about your your workout status <laughs> right now, uh, and uh, Gavi. For you, like this semester coming back to a, how many years already at the source? I don't know. But I've been here a long six years. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm basically ancient here. Um, so what have been your green flags about your classmate, friends? My classmate? Uh, yeah. Partner, whatever. Like. Well, I don't know. I guess um, my classmates, if I'm going to be honest with you, like I really only talk to like one or two <laughs> Yeah. classmates um and i don't know like we just kind of sit very similar to like what what ben said like we we just help each other out um we're always like checking up on each other you know because especially like school can be really stressful especially around this time of year so always checking up on your friend is a really big like green flag for me like yeah. i always like to check in around like mm -hmm. this time of year and be like hey like how are you doing or like hey yeah. did you did you get that assignment done because it's really easy to forget things <laughs> Gabby just wants to compare her current <laughs> <laughs> project to someone else's. I mean, she doesn't care if they finish. <laughs> you know what? I felt kind of attacked there, but I mean, you're not wrong. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, like just like I feel like yeah. just making making sure that your friends are like doing okay this time of year specifically is like a really big green flag for me. Um, yeah, in terms of classmates, I'd say that's pretty pretty similar to what Ben said. Really. Okay. Sean? Yeah, so I would say like a big green flag. So it's my second semester. As you all know, I, st I studied during summer my first semester. Very sad. <laughs> and uh, so big green flag of this second semester is actually I love how everyone is getting raw. Like a raw in a sense that uh, they are talking about things happening in their life. You know, not everyone is trying to wear a mask or like, and the fact that for me, that my classmates or my friends come to me talking about, hey, their situation in their life that is not too rosy, like, because we don't want to bother our friends. I would say, like, we tell them that we are fine. But for me, having classmates which open up really about, hey, this is what's happening in my life. Like, could we help each other? Like, if we are all in the same situation as a class, we're like, let's make things work for each other because we're all facing certain challenges right now uh, like looking for a full-time job after college uh, which is highly critical like uh, the, yeah oh man this guy's yawning on camera i'm sleepy oh I'm sorry oh my God, annie has a little date to get to tonight oh she there did she pass what did you see her <laughs> i'm confused oh, i thought you said annie <laughs> Annie. Yeah, I heard Annie too. Yeah, I was like, I was, yeah, you said Annie has yeah. a little date night to get to, so I was like, I thought she was like walking oh, around with somebody. Like, what are you but, talking about? But I think we should get more like in general, when you meet people, uh, whoever it is, what are your green flags? Like, what, what are the three things that make you say like, oh, like that person, it's a cool person. That person, um, I can be friends with that person. I can vibe with that person. Gabby, go okay. ahead. I really vibe with, like, direct and blunt people. Mm -hmm. Like, I... Maybe it's because I'm, like, a direct and blunt person. Okay. But, mm -hmm. like, I can't be friends with someone who, like... If I say something, they're going to get upset about it, but they're not going to tell me that they're upset about but it. Gabby and then it's just going to be, like... Well, uh, the reality is we all get upset. You want to say a specific situation, Ben? Right now. 
Elaborate. No. That's what I thought. <laughs> like, the thing is, like, people are always going to get upset. Like, if you're going to say an uncomfortable thing about mm-hmm. yeah. somebody else to their face, they're going to get upset. But how you deliver that message and how that person has enough self-awareness to, like, oh, let's take back and reflect. Yeah. I feel is, like just c- yeah. communication is mm-hmm. a really important thing mm-hmm. for me. Like, if, if someone doesn't know how to communicate, whether it's, mm-hmm. like... I don't know. I just feel like I need my friend, my partner, whatever family member mm-hmm. to be able to communicate. If I've yeah. done something that's upset them, let me know so that I can be like, mm-hmm. fuck, like, I'm really sorry. I'll try not to do that next time. Right? Okay. Like, I'm a very like, yeah. I'm a very like, I'm a very open person, but mm-hmm. I need you to be able to communicate with me so you can like, so I can know like my areas that I need to improve on. Um, yeah, I feel like just being direct and being able to communicate is like the two biggest green flags for me for like every type of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Very good answer. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Communication is key always. Yeah. For everything. But yeah. it's such an it's such it's 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 so oversaid but not explained well. I when agree. people say like, "Oh, you, we need to communicate." So what does that mean? Like And communication yeah. means something different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right? like how ben communicates mm-hmm. is different how i absolutely right so like mm. <laughs> it's it's very different and so <laughs> i'm illiterate <laughs> <laughs> and not. so um knowing how the other person communicates and being able to mm-hmm. communicate enough to understand your different communication styles i yeah. think is very important in any friendship relationship whatever yeah Uh, Ben, what are the green flags for you in general? In general? Mm. um, I like when people are okay with being wrong about something. It kind of, it's kind of annoying in an argument about something dumb. It's like someone's wrong, but they can't be wrong or they're like, they're not graceful about it. Like myself. But. uh, (laughs) You got that right. uh, Another thing would be. uh, hmm. Green flag uh probably communication basically i can't think of another one. Oh yeah <laughs> you can I, you. I can imagine uh, one big green flag for me is like uh, if someone let's say we are in a professional setting and like people like dress up for the occasion like or if uh, for example we are attending an event which requires a certain standard of dress code or like, uh, you know, th- just a good like presentation of themselves. For example, you know, you have a presentation coming up. Uh, it's going to be worth a good 30 points where you're introducing yourself to like external influential people in your field of study. So like if someone is like uh, dressing up as professionally, like took the time to uh, have a proper attire. I think that's a big green flag for me. It shows that I want to work in the future already with that person. I love that they are ready. It shows that they went the extra mile to really like meet the expectation and that you're going to get something good out of them. And I think it can become a red flag also. If like if somebody just show up like uh, my style, my life, my life, my way, that's very cool with you. You stand up for who you are and what you are. But I will assume that your values are that you really don't care about what you're getting into Mm -hmm. and that you think the world revolves around your way. While the biggest thing about the world is that we are a we and understanding that we are a we, we are a we and we, 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 we en français, bien sûr. Catch the podcast in French in your dreams uh, because we don't have the time to translate. Uh, (laughs) Sean does word for word. <laughs> word for word. Yeah, so for me, like, that's a big red flag also. Like, it shows that you just don't care mm-hmm. uh, about things. So, like, when people, like, uh, yeah, that's a big red flag for me. Red, green and red flag. It can pivot. Yeah. What's okay. a red flag for you, Gabby? Um, I think my red flags are different for, like, each category yeah for like yeah for like a a friend Mm -hmm. versus like an intimate relationship Mm -hmm. like a partner yeah i have different different expectations because they're playing different roles in my life so a a red flag of a classmate of a classmate first person you thought of what was the red flag about that person i'm not gonna lie to you guys someone who 
just has to be right for everything. Like they're the person who yeah. stands up in the middle of class and is just like, just, I don't know, just like always arguing everyone's perspective. Like if someone says an answer mm -hmm. and this person's just like, um, actually that's not the right answer. This is the right answer. Like, no, mm -hmm. that just, I can't, I can't yeah. do that. I can't. Similar note, but like slightly different. Like, mm -hmm. oh, the first is me is like when a student goes like, like throws the entire lecture off course, making the lecture longer. Like, oh yes like oh, so many questions big to big the point. big yeah questions are productive i'm okay with but like when it's questions about like something dumb because they aren't enjoying the subject and they kind of want to change it but like we have to do it yeah it's like that gets annoying to me but okay just because they're bored i don't like being thrown off i agree i agree but i also get really annoyed when classmates ask so many questions even if they're relevant because i'm just like we don't want to stay here for another hour like this mm. could have been condensed to two hours and now because of all their questions and the um teacher needing to elaborate it's now become a three-hour lecture and when it really only needed to be a two-hour lecture and like that really i know that that annoys so many people what i um, really like about some teachers like in my yeah. course is um they say that if you need some extra help some of them will stay after class and like give extra support well and that's the thing like i think a lot of people who do that um like who ask a lot of questions in class they feel the need to because like maybe they don't want to come to the teacher after class i don't know but i i, I don't know i just believe like if you're gonna ask questions to the point where it's extended in the class by like half an hour to an hour at that point, literally just ask the questions after class because I'm really not trying to stay here another hour longer than I have to be here. Yeah, that's fair. Like, <laughs> that is annoying. Yeah. Do you know that student like who always asks questions, but their questions are like two pages. Yeah. Ask two pages oh question, God. like yeah. probably to show off like that they know something. Or or yeah. and then expect they already know an answer to or they know the answer to just part. to validate yeah. like oh my god I hate that kind of student. Just want to confirm. Like, hey, I just want to confirm. Oh, like I know. that's me. Embarrassing. Let's I'm leave. <laughs> <laughs> it would surprise me if it wasn't. Yeah. To be honest with you. <laughs> no. Like. Um, well, I, I need to say a red flag, at least, you know, of like, what? so like, it's like everyone kind of like, you know, is like expecting someone to make the first move to make this particular assignment progress or making that, uh, uh, for example, like a group presentation. Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. But for me, I get tired of always taking that role. Yeah, the leader like, role. Right? Yeah, like. It's like it's good for me, like, but I would love. I'm here to learn also, like, and it it turns me it off. Can be like, draining too. Hmm? It can be draining. Always have to be the person that steps up and tries to push a project. Project. Yeah. Forward, right? You know, like uh, to do those things that people don't usually want to do, and to remove those barriers, and then just structure the work. It's it's very cool. I like it. It's mm -hmm. like it's natural in me. But so when now I don't say I I'm getting value out of it, like. I know you're doing it because it's just convenient for you mm -hmm. and but you're not adding any valuable input, you know, like there's the input which gets you the past grade. But are you put I would have loved to have people that also, hey Sean, this is I think your idea is great, but I would like to propose that so that it could be better, you know, like challenge my opinion, you know. Like, criticism. Yeah. Or like uh, you know, Sean, I see that you're working on that. I think I'm pretty good at this. Let me do that. So, like, uh, so there is a, a way, like, you know, I don't feel like I'm di directing everything, which feels like I'm directing everything without. Uh, and also, like, when you take that role, like, you get into the situation where, like, people ask you constantly question now to complete the assignment. Have a good night, mate. So, yeah, for, for me, I don't like it. It exhausts me a lot that day. Yeah, well, I think, like, that's... I feel like a lot and of people And it shows, like for, for me, where the red flag is, yeah. is when we do leadership classes and all those things. Like, yeah. everyone wants to be a leader, but no one wants to put the work that it needs to be a leader. Right. So that's, that's where my problem is. A big red flag. Like, oh, everyone wants to be a leader. I want to do this. I want to be an expert. But no one wants to, to put the grind for it. I feel of. like that's a lot of... Um, a lot of people feel like that with group work. Yeah. Group work is horrible. Like... 
I hate it. I hate group work yeah. um, because I feel like that a lot. I feel like that a lot. Um, but I feel like that's also part of like just group work. Like you get that even in the workplace. Yeah. You always get people that are slacking in the workplace or that like everyone knows like, oh, they're not really that great of a worker, but yet they're still here. So like, I think yeah. it's just, it's a, it's, it's a normal part of life, but it doesn't mean that it's not any more annoying or any less annoying, yeah. you know? For me, there should be a way like, uh, you know, like it's completely fine. That's how life works, but you say. Yeah. But uh, the reality is that everybody hates groups work. Like, uh, and uh, I don't know, for me, I think I'm surrounded by people who take initiative right now. Both of you are like uh, excel in your studies. Thanks, Johnny. And... Uh, <laughs> And taking that, but I would have loved to hear, like, from an open heart, from a slacker, like, you know, like, I slack also, yeah. but, like... Everyone slacks a little bit throughout life, right? But, hey, like, how do you feel, like... I used to be a slacker. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, in my, when I did my college diploma, mm. except for, like, second year, I, yeah. s I barely passed the first year. So, so how do you like feel, that? like, when somebody is doing your work and, um, like... When you knew you're not deserve, when you knew you were not deserving of that, it's gonna sound horrible, mm. but at the time, the mindset that I was in when I was slacking, mm. like I really yeah. just wasn't in a good place mentally, and so I genuinely was just like, if someone's gonna allow me to take advantage of them, that's mm. on them. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it sounds horrible to say that now yeah. as the person who often yeah is the person that leads, but I'm also mm. surrounded by a lot of people in my program who are very like minded. Like I'm in fourth year of my degree program, mm -hmm. so like we've kind of like taken out a lot of the people that are slackers. So right yeah. now there's not really many slackers in my program, mm -hmm. but like, I remember, yeah, my college, like when I was doing my college diploma, yeah. like, yeah, I was very much of the mindset. I was just like, I'm going to do the part that I am supposed to do because I would never, mm -hmm. I would never like, one thing I would never do is if someone gave me a part, I would always do it. Even if like, like I would, I would never say, Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'd always do my part. I okay. would just, I would just like, do the, do the bare minimum. Yeah, like, I just wouldn't go above and beyond. I think like, a big but, portion of that when yeah. I was like when I was slacking a lot, what had to do with how committed I was to the course is like I didn't even know mm -hmm. if I wanted to do that, so I was like, I don't care if I just pass, yeah. fail. It was like mm -hmm. I'm just here. Yeah, yeah, so I think it changed a yeah. lot. Like right now, I feel like um, uh, like I have a lot more initiative because I'm more invested in the course and I care. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think both one thing both Ben and I like have in common is we both we both came from places where we were slacking and where we were not in a great like mm -hmm. mindset and headspace. And now we're both very successful academically in our programs because we have that initiative and also because we care about what we do. Like we both are very passionate about the work that we're doing oh, yeah. and the, and what we're mm -hmm. learning. Um, whereas I feel like maybe when you were at Ottawa U and when I was doing my diploma, it wasn't, that really and it kind of sucks too because like when you slack enough you fall behind on the subjects yeah and just like it gets to the point where like you can't really help because you aren't knowledgeable about the subjects that was what was like in my situation at least because i slacked so hard i essentially like just stopped everything and like if it's group work i just kind of like rided the free grade yeah it was rough but you stop thinking about it at a certain oh yeah like you yeah. you stop feeling bad at a certain, yeah, a certain honestly, point yeah. you're just but like if they're like, gonna if they're gonna allow me to take advantage of them like then that's kind of on them yeah one thing that's really nice now. though like now is when you get like group of friends with people with similar mindsets of you and you all want to get the initiative you want that group you want the project done and you split it up appropriately like mm -hmm. projects go so smooth yeah like when you oh. get to choose who's in your group yeah the best thing yeah like uh so for me like uh, the big problem also with uh is the accountability uh of uh, the work you know like who, who takes okay like a group is not perfect. like is there enough like other professors doing enough like for me a phrase which i hate from professors is like uh, oh you know when you will go to work it will be like that yeah so, be self accountable yeah it will be like uh you will have people who don't work kind of way. Yeah. But the difference between work and college is I'm paying the college to get the knowledge and uh, the expertise so that I can apply it. And for me, I'm not getting that. If you're making me take a responsibility of uh, a group which where I can't learn. Exactly. And so, like, when you're with like-minded people, mm -hmm. you're going to ask questions that like push each other further. Yeah. 
And like that's another thing. It's I completely agree. It's like when you with, with people in your group, yes, in the workforce, I don't get to choose. Mm -hmm. But I'm not in the workforce. I understand what's going to happen, but I just want to yeah. learn and do well and thrive. And certain people drag you down. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like I completely agree with you guys. And I feel like this is a setting. Like we're in post secondary. This is a setting probably one of the only opportunities in our life where we can push the boundaries and do what we want and like explore different avenues and different routes. Um, and I feel like professors should allow us to do that more. And I, and I get on their mm. side, there's like a bunch of different like issues that could pop up. So they, they're kind of nervous yeah. to do that. And I do understand that part too. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is probably the one time in our life, but oh, yeah. in our lives where we are able to fully just like learn and try new things and all that stuff. And so I think that, you should be and when you work with people more. you know you, you're more likely to enjoy the project mm -hmm. and you're going to enjoy what, the course more and you learn yeah. more because of it yeah. cool. one thing which makes pisses me off about group work is sometimes i get jealous you know, like jealous. because last year in my dmc course so I, I was in the dream team of like slackers, you know, like. Uh, well, okay, I need you to explain that. The, what is a dream team of slackers? Ooh. Uh, you guys all just did nothing and somehow passed? So, <laughs> so let's just say I was assuming the role of a creative director role, okay? And Does like, work? yeah, it's like digital marketing okay. and stuff. So like you have to take a role. It's a called agency where you have a real life client. Oh, okay. And you need to work with them to develop uh, their marketing goals for six weeks. But you have different roles. You have like uh, the account executive, you have a project manager, you have uh, the creative director, the copywriter, the, the social media specialist, whatever you want. So, and then of that team, so like uh, our project manager was cool very good project manager, but didn't have a sense of like authority. You need to know in this group, like uh, two people were like dog shit. Yeah. Uh, Are you talking about us? No, no, he's talking oh. about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> where, where did it stop? Like, yeah, so, so basically it was a group of slackers, like, uh, and, and I was like working too hard on it. So like, um, basically I burned myself out. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, one of the slackers but like a fucking full time job, oh. like <laughs> when <laughs> when they. <laughs> what a what a like slap in the face! <laughs> like I imagine yourself, like you're giving yourself like two hundred percent. You know, I'm doing a career reconversion. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to prove myself in that industry. And then some dumb fuck, like uh, who is in your group, didn't contribute to anything. Just at the same time, start applying for jobs, which is logical. I now I appreciate that person. Hey, you did the wise move for yourself, but like, hey, at the expense of me, like <laughs> now I'm looking at her. Well, uno. <laughs> and, and you know, like the cherry on the cake is you see her post on LinkedIn, how she's so proud, what she's achieving. I'm like, you, <laughs> when I see you, I'll find you. <laughs> I, I I don't know what I'll make to you, but you like, will say how yeah. rude it was that you ditched the project. Yeah, and he's very disappointed in you. <laughs> I was in the room out loud, like with a boss, probably. Hey, you remember when you slacked and I worked two hundred percent on that project? Yeah, I'm super proud where you come from now. And yeah, so this made me jealous. I'm actually jealous of that person because I like, I think that person that what that person is having should have been mine. So I guess, you know, like, uh, and this transition to like, I want to ask you, what was the situation which you were jealous of someone else, actually? Like, Does it well, have to be like school related? It doesn't have to be school related. For me personally, um, mm -hmm. I used to, I was at university at one point mm -hmm. and I ended up dropping out. But all my friends last year, like over the summer would have been their graduation period. Mm -hmm. So like I was a little bit jealous in the fact that like I could have been done and I kind of wish I was done, but can't get enough school, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's, like, it's just yeah. like no, but it would have been nice to be done, but mm -hmm. here I am. Ah, shit one. But... Yeah. Well, well it's <laughs> something I'm jealous of. I'm, I'm... Yeah. You're a G I can see you being jealous. Yeah, like, I'm probably yeah. school. I'm still paying. No, it doesn't have to be school related. Yeah, but that's, that'd be something I'm jealous of. Didn't say it had he, he's very academic, so... No, but, like, that's 
Same here also. What else is hmm. this? Does that have to be the biggest thing? Like I will tell tell you, me what I get. Jealous Gabby is everything paid for by Cam. Ooh, that's a real one. I can feel it was in bro in motion, but he said. Where's Sean's in mine? Sugar daddy yet? <laughs> Do we have I don't to, like, know. Get hotter. Is that what's going on? What? She's a sugar daddy. Where's ours? No, it's it's her fiance. Who's her sugar daddy as well? <laughs> Which makes sense according to their values, both of them. They love a traditional lifestyle. Let them be. It's not my fault that I picked a man that makes a good living. Yeah. <laughs> I am jealous. There's a reason yeah. I was like that one. <laughs> uh, like, you're coming home. See, that's a good one. That, that's a good jealous. I was like, engineer, this one's coming home with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good pick. Look, we good for you. Later. We're happy for you. That, yeah. uh, Got a nice yeah. little ring on my hand. You're thriving. Yes, I you show it in, in every episode. I locked him in. <laughs> He's trapped. Uh, and you know, like when you're gambling and you bet and you're too far in, you can't get out. Yeah. Cam's at uh, uh your fiance's at that point. He can't get out. He anymore. can't bail out of it. You know. He's too committed. No, he loves me too. The ring's gone if he breaks up, <laughs> and he just can't risk that. <laughs> you were jealous. Um. Anything? Give us a reason to validate that jealousy. Uh, I would actually probably say. Um, Ben getting in a relationship. Ooh, just my Why? attention getting that. Why were you? Just- yeah, <laughs> because it's hard. Like when when your best friend, because like Ben and I, yeah, I consider one of my closest friends. Um, and it's hard when they get into a relationship. And although I'm very happy, I was very happy for him. Um, and and I I I like re- I really like his his uh, girlfriend. It was hard, like, because we would go from hanging out all the time and, like, seeing each other all the time. And, like, I'd go over and, and hang out and we'd, like, game together and we'd have so much fun together. And I don't know. I was just used to him being a consistent part of my life. And now, like, you're 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 not. And I think part of that is your relationship. But I think part of it is just, like, you have a really busy schedule this yeah. year. Um, but, no, I, I wouldn't – I would say, like, jealousy in that sense, like, mm-hmm. because, yeah, like, I think that's a natural part of, like – losing part of your best friend to a relationship that they're having and it's normal like mm-hmm. it's natural and it's okay mm-hmm. but yeah you are gonna have those feelings of like oh shit like i kind of miss my best friend but like he's with his girlfriend or she's with his boy her boyfriend or whatever you know what i mean like so yeah some feelings of that i'd say would be the most recent one mm-hmm. Sean, do you feel that way towards me as well? Uh, I don't feel that way towards you but i understand <laughs> Good where like uh where Gabby is coming yeah. from. Uh, that uh, feeling of like sudden, sudden like you've been a bit replaced kind of way. A sudden yeah. shift in the friendship is yeah. difficult. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult to like change that, you know? Yeah. But do you think that's justified then? How jealousy? Oh, I understand where it's coming from. Like the fact that, um, yeah, like going from hanging out a lot to a sudden shift in mm-hmm. time. Because we used to, I used to come here like every night. Because I had nothing, I was I lived like eight minutes away, yeah. and mm-hmm. I didn't have anything to do in my apartment, so I was like, "Hey, you might as well just go to work and hang out." Yeah. So, oh, then I was like, "Might as well just go to work and hang out." But uh, now, like my like like class schedule is like nuts. I have eight cl- mm, yeah. classes, and each one has a theory portion and a lab portion. And, and I'm also like at my full time placement right now, exactly, like eight like to four. Life happens, so yeah, like I think both of us have really busy semesters this year but yeah i think it was because we would like go get food together all the time and like i'd go hang out um like at night and stuff with like you and your housemates and so like it was very much like a close friendship yeah. and so the like it was almost like a night and day shift as soon as september mm-hmm. hit and our schedule started picking up um and then you you met your partner um it was like a night and day shift and that was difficult to like change to mm-hmm. even though i'm happy for you you know well, what i mean like it was still hard to 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 shift modes a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, but one thing which I can hear in common of our both jealous situation, me with my uh, with the person on LinkedIn showing off, like the slacker showing off on LinkedIn, uh, Ben being jealous of someone of his friends graduating and he's not, and you being jealous of someone getting in a relationship. Uh, and that change in dynamics is I can hear a bit of ego with all the three of us uh happening. So and the ego can be good. It's 
sometimes, but too much of it, we know it leads to a very unhealthy relationship with ourselves and the people surrounding us. Yeah, I can see that, especially mm -hmm. like uh, for mine, like looking at back at my wishing, I like graduated there, wanted like putting myself down kind of deal. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I should have been doing that too. Why am I not doing that? Why mm -hmm. did I drop out? Why did I go to all these different schools? It's just yeah. like a way to put yourself down. But where did you think like it took the better of you? Uh, like my ego? Mm. Probably when I was seeing people post about their graduation, it was like, wow, uh, I'm, I wish I was doing that. But here I am going year one again mm. and uh, going on to year two for like the third time. And it's like, it's hard, but mm -hmm. that puts you down. But I'm getting there. One step at a time. Baby steps. Yeah. For you, Gabby, one time in your life where <clears throat> probably your ego went a bit too much. Every day for her. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, that's actually a really good one. Like, I don't think I can think of like one specific mm -hmm. time. <laughs> it's just that about, frequent. <laughs> yeah. Completely honest. Um, I think I'm a very headstrong person. Yeah. And I think sometimes if I don't get my way, I kick off a bit. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I'm just like, well, if it's not my way, then it's the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to work on it because I know that that's not healthy. Yeah. But like it is it is something I'm trying to work on. Mm -hmm. I have like developed um, a lot like a lot more in that area. Um, but I mean, <sighs> specific situations i can't think of i mean unless mm. you guys can think you guys know me really well so unless you guys can think of any like i don't want to be here all night like <laughs> like honestly as much as i would love yeah. to evolve into this <laughs> we, i don't think people want a four-hour podcast yeah That's why you're so kind. i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh so so for me one time uh, ego took the better of me but well we always see ego in a bad way let me just go somewhere where at least a little bit of ego is better is like uh, you know i i was like uh, coming here uh, all my classmates in my first program the digital marketing program had experience in marketing or digital marketing and me being like competitive person mm -hmm. i say you know what i'm going to beat all of you uh i'm going to become better than all of you so like uh, and i took that a bit uh very like i need to prove myself because those dudes like they have experience and yeah you know that's that's always the big thing for students uh, uh what differentiate them from professional would be like the first line experience and it's it's something which free a lot of students but i'm telling you i came here i look them straight in the eyes i was like you know what one thing which i have is i i'm driven by competition i'm going to i um, don't know anything about it but i'm going to that I can outwork you at least in some way or the other, and th that in a healthy way, you know, I'm not going to like harm them or like uh, you know be mischievous. It's just like me working with myself, like what they are doing. Let me look what they are doing, and let me copy, see what I can learn from them, and do it better, and add my personal touch to it. And that's what I did. I keep listening to what everyone say or like what the professor says. I copy the same thing, and I try to add my personal touch to it. And that's how, like, I keep getting, like, uh... Prepare tomorrow slash read. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Sure. That's oh, my that's key. for tonight. Or tomorrow. What we're doing right now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Uh, my calendar never gets respected anyway. So, so yeah. I And, yeah, I got, like, uh, mostly, like, better grades than most people who had, like, experience in their field. So, I'm very proud of myself, like, and uh, yeah, so that's one time probably ego got the better of me. Like, mm -hmm. uh, not got the better, but like I use it in the right way, like to channel my energy towards like, okay, I will, I, I talk big talks. Now I need to go to that level. Like, yeah. okay, like, because I wanted to distinguish myself, you know, I, I wanted to show, hey, uh, I deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if I'm not from that background. So yeah, yeah be like that. but I one as well as you, if not better, kind of deal. Yeah, but one time I would say where it took uh, the better of me would be in that exact situation, at least what I sacrificed 
trying to become better than everyone. So it's like I neglected going to the gym. Mm. I uh, neglected working on my food habits, which I had back home. And it led to me gaining wonderful pounds, uh, you know, which uh, now I'm losing again. So, yeah, it's like um, it took like it blinded me so much yeah. that I was not paying attention to the other harm I was doing to myself. Yeah. So, and this is where, like, I said, no, this year for this program, I'm doing going to do it differently. I'm going to give the work, but uh, reasonably. Like, I know I have my life, first of all, my health and all those things, which are important as well. My relationship with everyone. So, yeah, that's how, like, I learned from my ego. Like, you can be your best. You can you want to be the best, but it should not come to obsession. Uh, high ego leads to obsession. And uh, once you realize that, it's a hard way to go back to where you want to be your natural self again. But it's a good way to move forward, I would say. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, that was my take on ego. Went a bit deep in there. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Very thorough answer. And and I think that's uh let's let's share some positive thing, you know, now that we've talked a lot of bad things, you know, like ego, jealousy. Uh, what's one positive thing? So each one of us will have to say like a positive thing which we think about each other. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sean, I like how you keep going. Like it doesn't matter the state, you give it your all, man. Okay. Like even if you're burnt out, like zero sleep, you, you always give it a go. And it's, I respect that. Thank you, mate. Gabby, your ego's nuts, and but I respect how humble you are when you claim you're the best. Literally, stop. Give a real answer. <laughs> Give a real answer. We all know I'm not humble. Yeah. Well, uh, you're very caring. Like honestly, like I know you come back and burnt out from your day, like your placement, and uh, sometimes you probably don't get the best sleeps, but you always bring a positive energy into the space. I agree. I agree. Honey. Yeah. I would not have guessed Gabby was a burnout person, to be honest. Like, if you tell me, yeah. yeah, like how you come here every day, like being all <laughs> zesty, like you say. Uh, hey, Shawnee. Hey, Shawnee, baby. <laughs> yeah. He walks in the door, I'm like, hey, Shawnee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so you would never guess. Uh, like, uh, but yeah, that's very beautiful words coming out, Ben. Aww, Caring. Thanks, guys. Big yeah. words from the treaty. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go. So my favorite thing about Gabby, and I think I mentioned it to you already this week, is I love how you demand the best out of life. Like uh, in, in, in today's... Sorry. No, in today's world, like, we, we glorify so much like we love to suffer. We love to to be those kind of things. And I love how you, in your perspective, you demand, no, I want this. I want that. And uh, you are a person that personify manifestation. Kind of way, like, you want this to happen in your life, and you're working towards it. I would say, like, uh, I remember when we were talking about uh, your career plan, about, I was very impressed, like, how you think in advance so much even like uh you know like it's going to be longer like you have that angle i can see that have that angle that end picture you can visualize that and you're not afraid to say like uh you're not afraid to take opportunities and this is something which i would love to have from you like to like i know i have a lot of uh, abilities to succeed than many most people here but I'm too humble about it. So, and it sounds very contradictory that I'm talking about it like that, but I would love to have that from you, that quality of demanding more from life. Like, you know, like, and it's a positive way. You demand comfortable things. It's not like I demand to be, you demand something to be in a better place. You don't demand it to just for like everybody say, oh, grinding for it, need to hustle. Like, uh, no, you demand it in like, hey, I want this. Like, let me get that. Yeah, so I like that about you. That's very nice of you guys. You guys bring up a tear in my eye. <laughs> Crocodile yeah, tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then don't exaggerate it. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. And, and Ben, what I love about I Ben. Speech as well. 
Oh, you're, you're going. You're going to get this speech, man. One. You're going to get <laughs> one. I love how a, you're a positive person. Really, it's very refreshing. Uh, for me, like I don't know where you get a lot of positive outlook, like where you get that from. But I truly admire that. For someone who is very hard on myself, I really admire how you take things in a positive way and in a very calm and composed way. Because, for example, you might have some issues or challenges in your life, but you're not letting it go to an overly dramatic mm. way where you think it's uh, impossible to overcome. I love how you take uh, challenges like, okay, it is for what it is. Let me go towards making correcting that or like making this work actually you're a very solution based person Thanks. and you have a lot of empathy uh, in how you communicate with people uh i do have it i i guess it's something which i had long ago which i still have but you're very like you you care a lot without saying it so Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah that. you're really good with compliments <laughs> yeah, I'm like, God damn, screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> you got a talent for speeches, man. <laughs> I try. Well, the politics. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> never. I'm maybe I, not I, racist, but... <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not interested in no. politics. Uh, it doesn't... Uh, no, man. You, doesn't you, got, you got a gift for moving people. I try. I, uh, you know, I, I would love to move people. I, I, I just love human beings. Uh, even for what we are. we are, we could probably be the worst thing to happen to this planet. Mm. But I really love that human beings can love also. It's like the power of uh, because how we feel for each other in any ways. It can be intense sometimes, but I believe like as long as people have love in their hearts, oh, yeah. it's uh, this was going to be okay. Like we see how everything like gets so problematic online or in the news. Like I think if we take things like. like she live a little bit and see the world. We could be okay, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's the positive thing about you. <laughs> so tell us one positive thing about you. Some self love here yeah, in the comment section. And yeah, but it doesn't come with everyone having a bit of a pet peeve, you know, about each other. Do I not get I to say, say my get positive thing? From Gabby too. Yeah, I want to receive another compliment. Oh, let's go, Gabby. Okay, I forgot. Oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> I generally forgot. <laughs> okay, I'm forgettable. No worries. Uh, it's true. <laughs> um. Okay, Ben, Benny. Mm -hmm. Um, you're a really good friend. And That's such think, a good compliment. No way. Thanks. No way. I'm gonna <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> Goddamn, hold your horse, horses. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. this beats Sean's speech. That's a pet peeve that allows you, Ben. I, know, I like, will come to that in a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. Um, you're a really good friend, whether it's um, I come in from work and I'm like, Franks, I've had a bad day. You always check on me if I like text you and I've had a rough week or whatever. Um, you'll always, you'll messages. call me and like you'll, you'll be there for me and you allow me to vent and you're a really caring person and I know sometimes you have a lot on your plate and I know that you're very busy. You're a very busy person. And um, I think there's never been a doubt in my mind that if I, if I ever came to you with something that I was struggling with, I know that you'd always be there for me. And that's hard to find in friends these days. So I appreciate that. Yeah. No, that's I why you're my bestie. <laughs> Man, my compliments were lackluster. <laughs> I think, all right, do Sean now. Okay. Yeah. But I uh, a baby. really lovely compliment. I love how you show this side of Ben that we sometimes we don't know. Like sometimes I think Ben has nothing to do. What? <laughs> like uh, <laughs> what I know you're I, I know you're so very I know you're very busy. <laughs> I know you're a very busy person, but you don't make everyone feel about it that hey I'm busy. Like us sometimes we will be like, Oh, you know, we're so busy. Gabby will be like, I'm like that also sometimes like you know, I'm so busy. We always vent about it. You know, and Gabby we always vent. But you never vent about it. So like, and the fact that you always show up for us, it's like sometimes a big, we, big quality. Sometimes we feel like you just exist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm like the NPC, the side character <laughs> to the main story. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Ben spawning back in the yeah. USA. <laughs> As he enters through the doors, he joins yeah. the podcast once again. <laughs> um, yeah. Shawnee? Ooh. Um, 
Nothing to say. No, I think <laughs> too much to say. I think your Free from very insightful. I think you're a very insightful person. Um, In which sense? You've experienced a lot of things in your life. And I think you're able to look at a situation and look at it from all perspectives. You're, you're really mm -hmm. able to sit down and be like, okay, I can see it from Ben's perspective. I can see it from your perspective too. Um, like when, for example, when Ben and I were having that argument, mm -hmm. you, after we had talked to you about it, um, and you were able to look at it from both of our perspectives and you were able to sit there and be like, okay, like I see it from both sides, but there was a middle ground. And I think that's a really important person is having a person that's a middle ground, having a person that, um, is not necessarily the peacemaker, mm -hmm. but just someone who's insightful enough to be like, Hey, you guys are kind of like high in your emotions right now, but let's take a step back. You guys both like love each other and our friends and all of that. And I think that's a really amazing quality to have. Um, and I don't think a lot of people have it. I think in today's day and age, it's like very rare to come by. Um, and I think having the ability to put yourself in other people's shoes and, and see different perspectives um, will serve you in every aspect of your life now and in the future. And it's a quality that I think um, I really admire about you. So thank you very much, Gavin. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do my best, you know, like uh, and that was a great way, you know, like I think to always in this world of social media, like where everyone is being so divisive or being talking always about problems, you know, like, which is cool. Like problems are here to be solved. But if we keep talking about it in a complaining way, nothing is going to change. Yeah. But I really love how we end up with uh, just positivity, you know, yeah. self-positivity in an intimate way, how we see positivity in every one of us and how we see positivity in ourselves. And that's something which I want to, to give to you is like practicing that self-positivity. Like uh, go and tell to the two people closest to you like something positive about them and then do it to yourself. It will feel great, just like we did right now. I really felt it, like when we just were like, you know, just said, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, honestly, it was mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. one thing and I don't think maybe you don't know that about yourself too. And it's nice yeah. to hear other people point it out. Sure, I was gonna say that, and I and I also think like one thing that maybe the viewers might not understand is like mm -hmm. we're all three of us are like pretty close, like we're pretty close mm -hmm. friends. So being able to like say that to your friends. Important and really like strengthens your friendship. Yeah, I just yeah. Like, yeah. let people know you care. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, and the key, talk with an open heart. Yeah, and on this note, tell us about some green flags that you like in general about someone, or some red flags that you see. Hey, tell us a red flag about us. Maybe we haven't noticed. Come back next week on another episode of a voice podcast. Until then. Enjoy uh, your time at SLC and see you soon. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, don't forget the thumbs up, uh, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.